Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about execution. Execution is everything. Ideas are plentiful. Everybody's got ideas, you know. It's like I like uh, physics is the law, everything else is a suggestion. Ideas are like suggestions. So everybody's got lots of ideas, but when it comes to getting high resolution in our critical listening environments, the execution is the key. And in order to execute, you have to have a strategy. And in order to have a strategy that you're going to achieve, you have to develop a series of tactics. We build a lot of new rooms. I think we have 11 new rooms going on right now as we speak across the world. And we have a checklist. I think it's over 230 items now. And they're numbered in that order of what you have to do first. So it's a process and you got to execute step by step. And it's really, if you view it, step back and view it, it's a step by step process, which makes it easy. But here's what people like to do. They like to skip steps. They like to combine steps. They like to think that they know more about the acoustical issues than our laws of physics. And that's where they fail. People don't fail to plan. You know, or I'm sorry, people don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. That's how it goes. We won't have that in any of our builds because, listen, it's expensive. Building materials are expensive. And a lot of times, especially with noise transmission issues and building a barrier, if you haven't measured the noise and you haven't built the proper barrier, you've just guessed, and then you call me for a solution, 90% of the time, I'm going to tell you you have to tear it out and start over. Because based on what you've done, there's no hope of treating the noise with the frequency and amplitude issues of your noise. So that's why it always has to be measured. First thing is noise floor. We want that room as quiet as we can. That works in our favor in many, many ways. We turn up, not as far. We hear more. The treatment in the room works better because it's more confined in its, its range that it works with. We're not pushing it. We're not turning the volume all the way up on our amplifier. We're staying in normal listening ranges, normal ranges that the room is designed for. We design our rooms mainly, or I'm sorry, mainly to go at 85 or hertz SPL. That's what we want. We want to have a room that works there. Now, some people want 90. Some people want 95. Well, 5 dB SPL is going to increase your cost probably 10 points. I don't know. It just depends on the usage and the size of the room. So you got to dial in. What's the average pressure level that you listen at? Because this is a container of pressure, your room. And the more pressure you put into it, the more problems the higher strength of problems you're going to have. The problems remain the same. The frequency remains the same because that's based on dimensions. But the amplitude, the amount of each problem gets worse with more pressure. Two choices for low frequency. The most popular one is our CAW. That's our in-wall process. And you can see that here in the video clip. So you can see we take our carbon technology and we install it between the studs. Now the carbon technology varies in thickness. Sometimes it's three inches, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. It depends on the pressure in the room and the usage. EDM guys, you know, we're always running five inch filters for the EDM guys because they deal with low frequency pressure all the time. They even have their own language. For low frequency. I can't remember how they break it up, but they break low frequency energy, I believe, below 80 hertz up into three parts. And they have their own language for it. So that tells you how serious they are. You can do freestanding units, large units. Our ACDA series, 12 square feet per unit. 
They're large units, but you're going to need a lot of them. Basically, you have to create a new room, not with hammer and nails, but with freestanding units. That's more frequency response friendly. People that use freestanding units are in rooms that were never designed from the beginning to be critical listening environments. They might have been designed to be bedrooms. They might have been designed to be living rooms. It just depends on what the usage was. Garages sometimes. So we have to look at everything. Middle and high frequency treatment, a little bit different. It's wall hanging. It's funny because people are always trying to hang our ACDA units and our carbon panels on the wall. <laughs> At 235 pounds, you can't do that. They're meant to be sitting on the floor. They're on wheels, so they move easy. Don't fight 20 years of R&D. You're not going to beat it, and you're not going to be smarter than the 20 years of millions of dollars that I've put into this research and development. Just follow the instructions and you'll get the good results. We guarantee it. So you won't have any worries on the other end. Must use tap. Type, amount, and position. So we have to know what treatment type we're going to use, how much of it we're going to use, and where we're going to place it. Why? Because every dimension in our room is different. Okay? We've got a different problem all the way around in the room because of the dimensions. So we have to be careful of that. We have to execute all tactics in a step-by-step -step manner. Ideas are easy. It's the execution that's the hard part. So we break that execution down into steps. And you do each step one at a time. That's the goal. Follow the sequence and you'll be fine. Can't skip steps or your resolution objective will not be achieved. Let's talk about the three types. We have 70, 80, and 90%. 70% is consumer, home theater, personal listening environments. This averages, you know, this is what we see in our data. Some consumers want 90%. They want mastering level resolution. Okay, we can achieve that if that's your strategy. Some consumers want mix engineer resolution, 80%. Okay, we can do that too. This is the benefit of defining the strategy at the beginning and then assigning the appropriate tactics to it. The elevator to success is out of order. You have to take the stairs one step at a time. As you execute, walk up those stairs one step at a time because every step you take is built on the step you just took. Execution is everything when it comes to critical listening environments. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.